Welcome to a very special 330 Sports Show. This is going to be the film room breakdown of the 1990 movie Christmas Classic Home Alone. It is a John Hughes, Chris Columbus film. It uh, stars Macaulay Culkin as Kevin McAllister, also stars Catherine O'Hara, Joe Pesci, and a cast full of others. Uh, Dave Hodge, Greg Kirchner, and Rich from Hall of Fame Huddle and myself are going to uh, break this movie down. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's take a listen to the movie trailer. Where are you going? We're going to miss a plane. When the McAllister family left on their Christmas vacation. Did we miss a plane? No, you just made it. Yeah. They forgot one small thing. Have yourself. I have a terrible feeling. Did you lock up? Yeah. Do we set the timers on the lights? Mm-hmm. What else can we be forgetting? Our troubles will be ours. Kevin! Ah! Home alone. Police in the northern suburbs are on the lookout for a pair of burglars who are calling themselves the Wet Bandits. You know that you're in there. It's Santa Claus. And it's Elf. Get off my property. This is my house. I have to defend it. Where's your mother? My mom's in the car. Where's your father? He's at work. What about your brothers and sisters? I'm an only child. Where do you live? I can't tell you that. Why not? Because you're a stranger. He's a kid. I mean, what can a kid do to us? Kids are stupid. I know I was. Use the lawnmower. This is it. Get out on your runway and hitchhike. I am going to get home to my son. Ah! Yes! Ah! Ah! Where are you, you little creep? I'm gonna tell that kid! Why did you take your shoes off? Why are you dressed like a chicken? Gus Polinski, poker king of the Midwest. If you have to get to Chicago, we'll gladly drive you. Hey guys! Yesterday, he was just a kid. Ah! But tonight, he's a home security system. You guys give up, or you're thirsty for more? From John Hughes. You know, I got a feeling this is going to be your best Christmas ever. A family comedy without the family. <laughs> home Alone. Are you here all alone? I'm eight years old. You think I'd be here alone? I don't think so. Directed by Chris Columbus, coming November 16th. What's up, guys? This is Justin Coffin for the 330 Sports Show. Joining me is Greg Kirchner. We have Rich from Hall of Fame Huddle. And we have Dave Hodge up in the top left corner. If you're watching, Dave will probably jump on. I think he's having some camera issues, but we'll be able to hear him at least. Uh, so we are going to break down the 1990. Uh, it is a John Hughes, Christopher Columbus film not the man that discovered america but the uh the director film home alone so uh gentlemen let's start off with uh your your you know i i know this is fresh in your minds for some of you it's christmas time but uh give me your let's dave let's start with you uh what's your impressions and memories from this movie oh man i mean going back it's hard to realize this is 19, 1990. So I, I thought it was even like a little bit later than that, but definitely a childhood favorite. This is one that my kids love every, you know, every last couple Christmases we've watched this and it's just a timeless classic. I mean, there's a lot you can say. I think it'd be interesting to talking about this movie today. Cause it's pretty much like a not, I mean, even back then there's some, there's some holes to poke in it, but a good classic movie, a good family movie for her for the times so it's uh definitely enjoyable so rich how about you well unfortunately probably mostly because i was a little hellion when i was a kid and uh i was probably the one crying over the pizza <laughs> um but I, I i specifically remember i was only I, I i agree with dave i didn't realize it was 1990 until yeah. recently uh, but I remember my grandma taking us uptown to, to buy it. And my parents got mad because they said that we didn't need it. And she didn't care about spending the money. So <laughs> I, I remember that being a, a topic of debate when I was a kid. Okay. Okay. 
And Greg, you said you you you're probably the most fresh with this in your mind. You just <laughs> watched the movie. What's your uh, memories or impressions of this movie? Yeah, I mean, I mean, first of all, I think it was one of the first movies I ever saw in the theater. Um, and I think we've talked about this with other movies, but I mean, I was born in '82, and I know you guys are probably all in that in that area. Um, so Kevin was eight when the movie, you know, in the in the movie, the movie was made in 1990. So it literally. I think is 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 extra special probably for all of us because it sort of is exactly where we were in life when the when when the movie came out yeah. so i think it adds a little more to it but yeah it's been a favorite for 30 years um i remember it used to come on i think it was like nbc like every thanksgiving night like back before dvds and all that stuff and i don't think i had it on tape so it was like you could only watch it a couple times a year when it came on now it's on every night but um, I can't get enough of it still. I just literally just watched it and, and it, it, it holds up. The one thing I'll add to it, I think, is that now that my kids are, you know, my kids are 9 and 11, so 9 and 11. So when they're, I mean, they watched it like a couple of years back, but you kind of wondered, like, would this movie hold up for them, you know, at, the, at 30 years later, like you said, and it sure, sure as heck does. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think to go along with what Greg said too, you know, there's a there's a comment in there where he talks about getting like a a sweater gifted to him like you know old man marley says he doesn't see his granddaughter but he sends her a check but he says like uh man i wish my grand grandparents sent me a check i, I just get these sweaters with birds knitted on them <laughs> like you can't you can't go around that's that's like death for a guy in the second grade so you know hearing something like that at an impressionable age is uh, something you kind of like always remember. So, um, you know, and not to mention the quotes and all that stuff we're going to get into here in a minute. But uh, real quick, again, 1990. Can any of you guys name me a movie you think that came out in 1990? I got a whole list here, but I'm just curious. Ooh. I, I got a one um, because it shares the, the one of the stars from this movie. It was yep. good to Goodfellas. So Pesci was like stri straight off a of Goodfellas set, right onto the Home Alone set. Oh, that, that's a that's a big one. Uh, another one starring uh, Demi Moore and uh, Patrick Swayze. Uh, Strip tease. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost. 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 <laughs> uh, also, uh, Edward Scissorhands. Days oh, wow. Under Pretty Woman. That's another big one. One of my favorite movies, Dave, probably one of yours too, Kindergarten Cop, uh, <laughs> mm. came out that year. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Dances with Wolves, Total Recall, Hunt for Red October, Misery, and Dick Tracy, to name a few. But uh, yeah, as Greg said, I think Joe Pesci went literally right from Goodfellas into this movie. Um, so that was a big one. And then I did literally did not see any of those movies till I was 25. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was going to say like Fiebel goes West or something. <laughs> yeah. I, ju I just went off the, uh, I went off the box office ones. I'm sure there's a few like Disney ones that we probably saw, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think we might've had HBO when I was growing up. So uh, I probably saw some of those movies earlier than I probably should have. <laughs> um, real quick fun fact too uh director christopher columbus i keep saying christopher columbus chris columbus uh you know he's also done mrs doubtfire harry potter a bunch of other movies um but he actually has ties to right here in uh, youngstown ohio so grew like i think he was born in pennsylvania raised in this area before he uh moved and had uh hollywood fame so kind of a cool fact there um you know, so let's let's talk about um, obviously Macaulay Culkin's the biggest star of the movie. Uh, we'll, we'll get into him and his career and stuff. But who are your guys? Let me ask this question. Who's your favorite character that is not Kevin in this movie? So, uh, Greg, let's start with you on this one. Who's your favorite mm. oh, character boy. that's not Kevin? For as, as much as I love Joe Pesci and just about everything he does and he's great in this, I actually kind of like Marv a little better than Harry. Um, just, you know, he's just, just a total kook. I mean, but he plays it extremely well. Uh, so I'm going to go with Marv. Okay. Okay. Rich, how about you? I would say Uncle Frank. 
<laughs> I mean, he he's 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 a. Uh, I don't know how many people have uncles like him, uh, but they're out there. Oh yeah, and uh, he he delivers some of the best one liners. That's for sure. <laughs> no doubt. There there's one of him. I feel like in every family, there's there's that guy. You know the mm -hmm. the shyster. The he's just kind of an ass. You know what I mean? He yeah. But like you said, he he gets the best lines in that movie too. Like to go right along with my shirt here. Look uh -huh. what you did, you little jerk. So um, <laughs> great one. And originally, I was looking this up. Uh, supposed to be played by Kelsey Grammer initially. The the part was oh. offered to him, uh, but you know he for whatever reason didn't take it. Uh, Dave, how about you? You know, you guys both took the two I would take. I was going to say Uncle Frank, too, because, I mean, <laughs> I mean, of all the, I mean, we'll, I'm sure we'll get to the one-liners, but, like, pretty much everything he says in this movie is terrible. Like, he's, like, <laughs> one of the worst persons <laughs> out there. So, um, but, no, and his, but his mom plays a great role. You know, if we're going non-funny, like a serious role in some ways, I think she does well. So. Okay. Okay. Dave, let's start with you and we'll bring it back around. Opposite question. Who is your least favorite character or most hated character, I guess you could say, in this movie? I'm not a big fan of Peter, his dad. Yes. I mean, he he's very much like he I mean, once he figures it out and he gets to the airport, I mean he's like, why don't you stay here? I'm gonna go over to Paris and France and hang out. Like your kid's like at home by himself. You're leaving your wife. I mean. He's not uh, the greatest, you know, I wouldn't say the greatest dad picture in this movie either. So I'd probably say him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Underwhelming. He does, he's kind of underwhelming, I think, in it. So. Okay. All right. Rich, how about you? Least favorite character? I would say Frank's wife. And because I don't <laughs> even know her name, like she's like, she, she should have been more impactful. She's the aunt. Uh, she just kind of is there and has no impact on the movie which is kind of disappointing okay we all have ants that are really cool and they could have really uh upped her her impact on the movie she does give uh uncle frank her her husband a look when he says well i forgot my reading glasses <laughs> yeah <laughs> greg how about you oh boy favorite I mean, or most hated character i would say you know he does a, he does an all right job but i would say the most hated is it, it's got to be buzz right i mean it's like yeah he, he does well but like i don't know it's, it must be i think it's like a movie thing where it's like the the, the older sibling who's a dick like 100 percent of the time and is <laughs> never nice at any point except at the very end when he gives like a small backhanded compliment like at least she didn't burn the place down but <laughs> I have, I have a lot of problems with Buzz, and we can get into that a little bit later on as we go along. But um, yeah, just not a very uh, endearing fellow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I. Those are those are all good. I I actually, Dave, I, I think I got to go opposite of you. I I think I got to say his mom is okay. one of my biggest pain in the ass characters, and she's obviously redeemed herself. She's been in awesome movies. She's a great actress. Yeah. She's been in Beetlejuice. Uh, she now is in what Shit's Creek that kind of like blew up over uh, pandemic times. But uh, she is a great actress, uh, Catherine O'Hara. But like, first of all, she tells Kevin to go upstairs after like basically her older son just like berates him uh, for eating the pizza. You know, like like Rich said, you know, if you had an older brother like that that was being a piece of shit to you and you get in trouble for it. Like that that's kind of shitty. And then she goes, Well, why don't you wish to Santa that you don't have a family anymore? <laughs> like she basically says, you know, Kevin, it's gonna be, you know, most normal parents would be like, why don't you just go down, go to your room, calm down, relax, then come out and clean help clean up or whatever. No, she's like, go upstairs, go sleep with Fuller, who's gonna piss the bed. And <laughs> You know, basically, we don't want to see the rest of the night. <laughs> right. And basically, wish that we're not here and, and maybe it'll come true. So, and by the time he wakes up, you think it is. So, um, so I, I, I'm going to go with her just based on uh, their performance. So, 
Um, all right, let me ask you guys this. Before we get into kind of like plot points and stuff like this, I have some overarching questions to this movie. So my first question is, this, this movie takes place uh, in the suburbs of Chicago. Obviously that house is kind of known for being historic. I think it, there was just a big story about it being put out on Airbnb. Like you yep. can, you know, like a stay or whatever. And it was very confusing too. What, did you try to enter that? No, but it was like, all you had to pay is $25. Yeah. It, it, like yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand that either. It, it, like, and it's only it. open one day. I mean, yeah. put it out there for every day and charge a thousand dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Imagine the cleaning costs on your Airbnb if the wet bandits come in come into town. <laughs> but <laughs> let me ask this question. So that that house, you know, I don't know what that would cost in today's market. I, I'm gonna guess based on our housing market that's booming, that's a minimum. Five million dollar house in the suburbs of Chicago. Uh, so we'll say back in 1990, that's a million or a two million dollar house. So you got to be pretty wealthy to live there to afford it. What do you think? Here's my long story to get back to uh, the overarching theme. What the hell does Kevin's dad do to one own that house and two be able to fly his whole family? I think there's five kids in his family to Paris, not to mention the other aunts and uncles and, and all that. So what do you think Kevin's dad does? Like if you get, have to give a hypothetical answer. Uh, Greg, how about you? What do you think? There, there's actually some, you can get in some internet rabbit holes on this. And there's like, there's a, there's a pretty good one that, that actually says he's, he's gotta be some kind of mafia, like a mafia boss, but um, I, I would guess he's in, I would guess he's got some cushy sales gig. Okay. I don't see it. He doesn't have like pre the presence of like somebody who's an executive and clearly like he can't even keep his house in order. So I don't see like the leadership qualities, but I bet he's like a, he's some like pharmaceutical sales, like director or something and just makes a boatload of commission. And incidentally, um, I saw something that those, that the four first class tickets they got plus however many coach, at least in 2019 would have been $42,000. Mm. So call it 20,000 in, in 1990, but yeah, it's wow. Ridiculous. Wow. Okay. So that he's doing well for himself. Let's just say that Rich or Dave, what do you guys think? I, I was going to say, he's like, he's kind of boring. He's kind of dry. I'm thinking a CPA is a partner at a CPA firm. Watch, watch, like your, watch yourself. Watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming backhanded comment there, but <laughs> I mean, he's in the firm and he's, he's one of the partners and he's, nah, that's, that's my guess. Something, I was going to say something like Wall Street, but he's like too slow moving and too, you know, too kind of boring for that. So. Okay. I really can't come up with any creative guess, but I can tell you this, being involved in girls basketball for the last 10 years, I found out it's probably not all that real unrealistic. There's a lot of people who have a lot of money and yeah, I see kids on social media that are on vacation like every two weeks at the beach, and it's it's probably not that unrealistic. But okay, okay, yeah, I mean he's he's got to do something. Well, maybe the family has money too. Um, I I heard something where there was a deleted scene where uh, you know his his brother actually lives in Paris and might have paid for the trip or something like that too. So. You know, like Greg said, you could go down these internet rabbit holes. Uh, Greg, was that the only one you uh, you heard? That's the, only, that's the only one I saw on it, and I and it was like a year or two ago that I saw it. But there's some kind of like thing about him being in the mafia. Uh, okay. Ken Carmen was on Twitter talking about that the other day. Oh, really? <laughs> he did, he didn't give anybody on the internet credit, but he was he had this big old thread on Twitter about how uh, Kevin's dad was a mafia guy. <laughs> All right, let's let's reach out to Ken and, and get his thoughts on this very, very soon. All right, let's um let's get into this too. The movie within the movie. And we're gonna get to plot points. <laughs> so this is probably my favorite little like thing about this movie. Angels with filthy souls. So <laughs> this is a movie that in no way exists, but it's based on a 
a former movie I think that came out in like 1938 or something like that. I think it's called Angels with Dirty Faces. Um, yeah. And it's like a Cagney and Lacey type, you know, movie. Um, but Greg, I, I know you know a whole bunch of, about this. So I, you just just take it with what, however you want to take it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think you hit it on the head. I mean, they literally just shot a a movie on some sound soundstage at a school like that was within this movie and it like I'll tell you what it's I, for the longest time I guess you would never know I, I didn't know until I don't know but, but I mean pre-internet no one would have any idea that that wasn't a real movie I just assumed it was a real movie yeah. and even when they're like even when Harry when Marv like when when Marv gets duped by it and comes back and he's like it just that voice sounded so familiar i remember watching that like thinking that all right that must be a real movie like and that's why he said that but yeah it was it it's awesome um and the uh the the interesting thing i read about yesterday on this that i that i didn't know was that originally the two characters uh snakes and uh and the other like the guy that shoots them were supposed to be opposite and the guy um I, I'm forgetting his name. The guy that the guy that kills the other guy had something wrong with uh, something wrong with his leg or something, so he couldn't die. Like he couldn't die in the scene, so <laughs> he ended up playing that part. But the the significance of that is they made a second movie, and that that guy then continued and played that role again in the second movie. Probably got a nice probably got a nice check in Home Alone too. And the and the guy that got killed off in Home Alone one was actually supposed to be the killer. That would have then gone on and Johnny, played it again Johnny's too. The guy that, Johnny is the one that killed is the killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I look, I look it up. Remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and who the hell's AC? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <the eighth> card. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, and if you look at uh, the tapes, I think there's like a Rolling Stone tape uh, below that, like that's on the tour uh, from one of their tours, and uh, you know stuff like that. So just just kind of interesting you guys have any um rich you got any thoughts on on that that scene or those scenes in particular uh i know the one thing that i always think now so more so than when i was a kid uh he would have much better technology to uh replay the movie scenes in instead of hitting pause and <laughs> fast forward like nowadays he could he could edit that whole thing and it would be all you have to do is hit play one time. <laughs> that's, that's a great point. Back then, it was a lot of work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do also love how he puts it in one of those TVs with the VCR combo, and he plays the sound, yet, like, they're running. The pizza guy is, like, halfway around the house, yet you can clearly <laughs> hear the, the tommy gun going off. Must yeah. have, like, a full surround sound outside going on there. <laughs> I think the last time I watched it, which was probably yesterday, uh, <laughs> he... I think I saw like big, huge speakers set up in the kitchen. Uh, you just hate, you just see them okay. for like a split second, but okay. still, even <laughs> even with speakers like that, like you said, it it you can hear it clear as day, uh, you know, all yeah. the way outside. Right. Interesting. I actually watched the movie uh, this past weekend, and I watched it. I don't know why, but I watched it with subtitles on because in that scene, I always had trouble understanding. I thought he said fair to fair how much do i owe you and he said uh he he says something like completely different than what i like you know truth be told or you know something like that like i i don't know i, I think just he says was, is that so is that yes yeah, is, is exactly. that so is that so <laughs> so um I, it's just awesome but the with the one part with uh when marv is kind of peeking in he he does amplify the sound with the uh you know the fireworks and the yeah. uh the pan there you know for a little bit some guy in there just got blown away <laughs> <laughs> oh no right. no thanks let let's um let's do this let me I, i'm gonna ask just a few more questions and we'll get into like you we can start poking holes in the plot and stuff like that but uh if you guys this is this is a tough question i have two answers for this one so i'm gonna let you guys go first if you guys could pick one piece of movie memorabilia from this set uh, or anything from the whole movie, you know, not excluding the house, what would you pick? 
Rich, we'll start with you on this one. Really? Oh, you want you want time to you want time to think of it? (laughs) Yeah, you are you already know the answers. I got all (laughs) Dave, Dave, how about you? You think you got something in mind? I I wrote down a couple things. It was a little bit of struggle with this. And I asked my son, I said, Hey, what do you think you would take from it? And we debated about it like all the the whole car ride home. So wait, you had the questions too? Oh, I'm getting screwed. Well, <laughs> well, we well every time, yeah, every time we break down a movie, we he asks this question, so we are a little bit. I guess we yeah, are a little I'm, bit. I'm pretty structured. <laughs> I'm pretty structured. Rich, this is your uh, inaugural voyage on the uh, 330 movie breakdown. So, oh, I got it. I so got the it. next time when we do Home Alone two, you're gonna be, you'll be uh, against all odds. I got this. <laughs> all right. So I'll say, um, I think I froze again, but can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay. Excluding the excluding the house, I'm gonna go with actually Harry and Mars van, the okay, like the okay van, you know, that they got <laughs> the by heating the, and plumbing. Yeah, by the way, the wet I never picked up on this literally till yesterday. It's a plumbing van and they're the wet bandits. <laughs> and I never put that together. Never put that together. The wet bandits and it's plumbing van. But okay, that's cool. Where are, you, where are you going to put that thing, though? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I was trying. I mean, there's a couple other things in there, but I'm sure you guys are going to mention them. So, OK. All right. All right, Greg. We'll I, go I, to you. I, I actually had the exact same thing because I think it would be cool to do some kind of like Internet thing where you just park that. Th- you go to like like wealthy neighborhoods and you just kind of park that thing out like on the street and just kind of <laughs> video like what how people react to it. I think that would be pretty funny. Okay. Um, so that was my that was my pick, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna say the picture of Buzz as a girlfriend, and just have that like sitting in your house when people show up. I think it would be pretty incredible. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. I didn't have that. That's good. That's good. That is a good one. Which yeah, I'm sure we'll get to this too. But by the way, the uh, I think it was like the art director or something, or maybe it was even Chris Columbus was like, that's too mean to like have like an ugly girl in that picture. So he used one of the art director's sons put him dressed him up like a girl and and made him in the picture just so it wasn't like abusing someone's self-esteem for the rest of their life (laughs) all right rich how about you i'm gonna go with two since you get two i get two all right uh the basketball fan in me wants the michael jordan cut out oh that's a good one Not, not the not the poster on the wall on the door at the beginning of the movie. I want the the aftermarket cutout, um, on the and tran- I also want yeah. I, I want the tarantula. Oh, okay. You think that thing's still living? What's a what's the lifespan of a tarantula? I don't. I'm guessing they're probably pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Like, years. It can't be. It can't be animals. 32 years though, can it? <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay, <laughs> I'll mount it taxidermy it <laughs> all right all right all right that's good then because none of you guys took mine so I'll, I'll i'll name my two as well so the first one is the statue that continually gets hit oh. outside uh by the you know the pizza man and whoever else comes it's it, it becomes like a running joke you know what i mean like it constantly gets hit knocked mm-hmm. over and that's, it's, it's that's just my, like my son picked my son picked that as well it was that a good one okay yeah, that's, that's good. That, that was good because i think it has like physical humor and comedy and it's like you know things you had to do back then to get a laugh whereas like you can do like kind of get a laugh a little easier now and then the other one i picked is something that macaulay calkin actually drew himself was the the plan laid out of like what mm. he was going to do when the burglars came in. I thought that would be really cool to have that like framed somewhere in your house, uh, you know, like in a the bar area or basement or something. I thought that would be kind of cool. So those are my two. Um, so I'll tell you what we're going to add one more before we move oh, on. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. The gold tooth. Oh yeah. That's good. <laughs> that's that's good. good. I mean, the gold commodities we're talking are, are going through the roof. <laughs> that tooth mm-hmm. is worth something now. Nobody said the VHS tape. Uh, the VHS tape. That, that oh, that is a good one. That'd be cool to just like have out on your uh, on your yeah. counter, you know. Right. Yeah. So Thanks, Justin. Has, you're gonna have me search on eBay tonight. <laughs> <laughs> who the hell has a VCR now? Oh, by the way. So, all right, guys, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be uh, we'll be right. Back. 
This episode of the 330 Sports Show is presented by Nash Nutrition, the good for you protein bar. We believe in nourishing the body with wholesome ingredients. Nash bars are gluten free, soy free, and dairy free. Each bar contains 20 grams of protein from egg whites, pea protein. We use dates and honey to naturally sweeten things up. Peanuts, almonds, cashews, and coconut make up our healthy fats. Never any artificial ingredients, sweeteners, or preservatives. We are proud to share the Nash Bar with you. Please check out Nash Nutrition at nashnutrition.co. They are excellent. I highly recommend uh, the peanut butter one. Uh, Chad and Hannah do an excellent job, and we thank them for uh, being great supporters of the 330 Sports Show. All right, so we are going to uh, kind of get into the plot here of Home Alone. So basically, movie starts out, you kind of see the beautiful house outside in the Chicago suburb. And then, uh, you know, Kevin's upstairs complaining to his parents that, you know, Uncle Frank won't let him watch the, the movie. Uh, the older kids or the big kids can, um, you know, and his dad's telling him to go pick up those micro machines that are out there. That's another like 90s trope. I don't know if if you guys had micro machines, but that's one thing I definitely remember mm -hmm. from uh, being a kid. I, I played with those things and Legos all the time. But um, also while all that's happening, you know, and the craziness and madness of this house, uh, Joe Pesci, who is uh, playing a police officer at the time is, is just standing down there waiting to talk to, uh, to someone, anyone that lives in this house. So um, what's your guys, let me ask this if if you were let's just say this was your house you know you're kevin's dad whatever if if you walk down the stairs and he's like are you kevin are you uh, mr McAllister that lives here blah 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 wouldn't it be a little odd to think uh you know why is there a cop just just standing in my in, in my doorway you know like what's that all about that was be very was odd together too it was like the house was total chaos. Everyone's <laughs> running everywhere, not to mention the next morning. And I think he, the, the police are there for like 20 minutes. He talks to like basically everybody and no one thinks to go get like Kevin, hey, the police are at our house. <laughs> like, it's crazy. <laughs> so. And, and since when do cops even go door to door uh, to make sure your house is secure for the holidays? Like it, the whole, like, like Dave just said, the, the, there's no urgency that there's a cop standing in your house or the, you know, just, it's really weird, but. And, and how did he get in? Like, he's just standing <laughs> in the house. He's like, not at the door. He's just, and somebody let him in and then right. just went up, went on and did whatever they were doing. Yeah. Very odd. I, yeah. you know, I, I hate to, I hate to drop the, uh, the white privilege tag, but I mean, this is only happening in a rich white neighborhood. You know, this happens nowhere else. No one else. He, they're not checking on anybody else's house in the city of Chicago except for this neighborhood. <laughs> so just, just saying, just my opinion. Sure. So, so anyway, finally gets to talk to him, whatever. The pizza guy gets there. And I actually thought, I don't know about what you guys think. You know, like I don't order pizza a ton, but I get it, you know, probably every two, three weeks, something like that. Um, I think the pizza price is relatively main maintained over the years. Like what it, he said, it was like, I think he's like 10 pizzas, 120 bucks or something like that. So, I mean, yep. the relative inflation of pizza has, has, has stayed <laughs> flat along, you know, inflation's a big deal in this country right now. Uh, but, but pizza does not seem to be from uh, 1990 to 2021. So it's and, also um, that the same pizza guy comes back later. <laughs> 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 and also in Chicago, we only got one guy delivering pizzas there, I guess. <laughs> and what is it? Little Nero's? Is that yeah? Is that what Little it is? Nero's. Is that is that a made up or is that an actual chain? Yeah, I think you know it's made, it's like a play off of Little Caesars. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it says uh what deliver in 20 minutes or it's free. <laughs> yeah. 20 minutes. Sure. I'm like, man, it takes longer than that to make the pizza. <laughs> exactly. Uh well, I, I was watching it with Kenny Griever. I don't know if you know Kenny. He's from the Youngstown area. Uh, I do not. Uh -uh. 
I, he was over at my house. We were watching it. And I said, man, if I'm buying that many pizzas, I think I'm going to get the hot and ready's. I ain't paying $122 <laughs> for pizza. Exactly. Well, if they're spending 20 grand though, on, on a flight to, uh, <laughs> flights to Paris. And I don't think they're worried about 120 bucks. That's true. Pizza. So, you know, um, you get your like, you get your first subtle like Uncle Frank one line or two, and he's like, Ugh, "Traveler's checks, <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit." Like seriously, and you could tell. And Dave, this is one part where I actually do like like uh, the mom here because she's like, "It's all right, Frank. We've got cash." <laughs> like you know, she's heard that line before. <laughs> Freaking cheap. And she gave a good tip, apparently. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Well, yeah, well, as somebody who delivers to people uh all, all the time now i it the, the tip has to be really good for you to tell them right to their face thanks for the tip that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> to be to be fair about my the mom being my favorite i think like the whole family fails in this movie like <laughs> i don't know how you could possibly go to the airport with like that many people and not realize that you're missing somebody it's just <laughs> that's true everyone in the family deserves and, and and of course when they're when he knocks over buzz they're all staring at him as if he just murdered somebody yeah you know? exactly and buzz is like three times his size <laughs> right freaking buzz so it's, well, it, it, it's your first lesson and we got basketball coaches on here and we got everybody who's played sports you know the second one to act always gets caught broken. that's <laughs> yep. happened yep. twice it happens, happens in the second movie too. Kevin didn't learn. The retaliation always gets the flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good point. Good point. Hey, to backtrack one scene though, before uh, the pizza gets there, they're up in Buzz's bedroom, and it's uh, it's his. I don't know if that's his cousin or and whoever. And Kevin's up there, and he starts looking out the window and and telling the story about uh, old man Marley next door the uh, south bend shovel slayer so uh apparently he murdered his entire family in <laughs> 1958 uh and got away with it and somehow lives in a you know a suburban town in chicago so thoughts on uh, we'll, we'll get into old man marley a little bit more but thoughts on old man marley at, at this point in the movie i have one but not for this point in the movie Okay. All right. All right. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it then. So I just, I think it's funny that I, I think he's like their next door neighbor, but like the story's told and he's probably lived next to him for years. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's told like, this is the first time anybody's ever seen this guy. Just it's walks just, up and down, shoveling the sidewalks. Oh, and I had mentioned earlier, I had the captions on uh, in the movie. I never realized Buzz says he like, he they, he puts the bodies in the trash can and the salt turns them into mummies. Like, <laughs> yeah, is that is that scientifically accurate? I, I, I actually said something. Again, I've watched it ten times in the last two weeks. But uh, when someone was over here watching it, I said the same thing. I'm like, why did they choose to say mummies? Yeah, <laughs> like that doesn't even make any logical sense. <laughs> what is that all about? So. <laughs> Um, so let's go back to the kitchen scene. They're all eating the pizza now. This is when all shit hits the fan. And by the way, the pizza literally was delivered. They haven't paid for it yet, but they're out of cheese pizza. They're out of cheese pizza already. <laughs> Buzz, in maybe the most disgusting scene in the movie, is just like has his mouth open and just is pushing the pizza in. He's not chewing, he's not enjoying it. That son of a bitch is just pushing and shoveling, you know, that pizza in his mouth. So- uh, That's not nearly as disgusting as drinking milk and eating pizza at the same time. Oh, that's a good point. That, that is, is so point. gross. I will say though, when I was a little <laughs> kid, I think that was something I probably did. But if you're over the age of 10, that's not acceptable behavior. No. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask this was that scene as we lead up to uncle frank's uh great quote here was that scene intentionally put in the movie do you think uh and i for this reason the milk spills this is pre 9 11 obviously so they have actual airline tickets so the milk spills on the airline tickets the the 
I don't know if it's um, custom stuff or whatever. Um, is that done on purpose to make you see them throw the tickets in the trash can or in the microwave, do you think? I mean, Kevin's ticket actually gets thrown in the trash can, but I think the problem is, is it's extremely hard to see that. And I don't think the first 20 times I watched the movie, I even knew that. Like until you like three I still did not know that. <laughs> yeah. So his his ticket gets thrown in the trash. So I certainly think they it was purposely done, but I mean, I it doesn't, I think it doesn't again misses the mark because you can't, you don't really, it's so quick you don't see it. Okay. That was actually one of my questions about the scene. I'm like, I was, I always wondered why they put so much emphasis on the stupid trash can. Like it's so, it's so like obvious. Like let's put the camera right in the trash can bluntly. That's a good point. I, I guess I'm going to have to watch it again here when we get off and see if I can find that ticket. <laughs> I think, I think it's done. The reason I asked that was I think it's done intentionally because uh, John Hughes, the writer, wanted to set it up like I think so it was somehow believable that you know you could actually leave a kid behind he wouldn't get checked in on the airline and that's just my opinion so I don't know that's that's kind of what I think um it's and, a good point because they would have an extra ticket when they got there and realized right. this for right I never saw that actually so so let's move on to the next morning um uh, obviously crazy weather the night before it knocks the power out here's another reason uh i'm not sure if this movie could be made today because one everybody's got cell phones right so you would probably have an alarm set on your cell phone but they were saying if i if my memory serves me right like the vans that were picking them up were going to be there at 8 a.m so they know they're going on vacation. You got me to tell me not one of those 30 people in the house were up before 8 a.m. Yeah, right. Yeah. And 45 minutes, they, they, they got in the van, you know, checked what they thought was everybody and got to the airport through, you know, pre 9-11 security. They got, there is zero chance you are getting there now with even an hour and a half. So, so, I, so, so I thought, I'm sorry, Dave, Good. I'm going to pitch this question because I have some real timeline issues here. What time, what time do you think their flight was? If the vans are there at eight and they're on an international flight and they're a half hour from the airport, right? presumably their flight's probably 1030 or 11 or something. You would think. And they left the house 45 minutes before their flight. So are we led to believe that they spent two hours scrambling when the vans got there that's a good point i feel like it's like five minutes i feel like the vans are the saving grace like <laughs> they should have cut the vans out and like made them drive to the airport because the fact that the van showed up it's like oh shit we slept in let's hurry up and we're only going to leave 15 minutes later than we wanted to so it's like a little bit that's i mean obviously you can that's when you watch it a hundred times you knit it that sort of stuff but that was one that i was like that doesn't make sense okay well, I'll let you guys analyze that aspect. I'm, I go the other direction. I didn't fly till I was 28, and I was scared to death that I was going to sleep in on my first flight because it was really early. And to this day, I still have a fear that I'm going to pull home alone if I'm not careful. <laughs> what well, and, and just running through the airport and not many people, it, it's just it could not it's one thing that it would not be able to happen in, in today's world or, you know, since 2000, since October, 2002, you know, or 2001, mm -hmm. this could not happen. So, um, you know, anyway, I skipped over a part of, you know, he's banished in the, in the upstairs. They forget about Kevin. They count the neighbor. I think it's the older cousin that counts the neighbor, the back of his head, that the neighbor that asks a hundred questions. Um, you know, and they miscount him for Kevin, but uh, somehow they make it. And let me ask this too. What do you guys think about the four adults sitting in first class with the rest of the kids sitting in coach? It seems legit to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, is it cool? Is it the right thing to do? Or is it a dick move? Like McAllister's family tradition? I mean, they're all 
they're all kind of dicks in a way. I mean, <laughs> I, can, I, I can't get over how incompetent this family is on so many levels that the, I mean, how many are there? There's 11 or 10 of them? 14, I think, right? Okay. Yeah, like but they she counts 11, but then plus the adults. So you're telling me in like four adults, not one of them realizes that Kevin doesn't get their, their youngest kid doesn't get on the plane. It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh man. So, anyway, so they, they somehow make it, you know, they're, they're on the flight and they're feeling good. They're relaxed. Of, of course, um, you know, uncle Frank is uh, stealing silverware and, and drinking extra champagne like he should like real dick move once again. But, uh, but uh, anyway, they, they cut back to Kevin waking up in the attic, looks around, obviously no one's there. But, finally is like hey i made my family disappear and they zoom in on his face Th this kid's thought about this before this kid this kid has thought about this before is kevin <laughs> does kevin actually wish his family had disappeared or is he just a prisoner of the moment what do you guys think I think he's a prisoner at the moment, but he, 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 but I think he really thinks he, I mean, I, I do believe that he just like the look when he sees the cars in the really small garage that like look like they you couldn't even close the garage if you wanted to. He's like, they haven't left yet. And he makes this like, look, I mean, he's convinced. So, mm -hmm. and, and I think he thinks he did it. I think he thinks he made it happen. I, I think that's part of the uh, allure of the movie for all kids. I mean, like you said earlier, we're we're all the same age. Uh, like when I was that age, I would have thought it was so sweet mm -hmm. to be home alone and do whatever I want and eat whatever I want mm -hmm. and watch whatever I want. Like, yeah, so it, it, I think that's kind of what makes other, you know, when we were young boys, really like the movie because, hey, I'd love to sled ride down the stairs with us on a sled. <laughs> exactly jump on your parents bed and like watch yeah. whatever you want eat whatever you want yeah yeah no doubt no doubt so okay so on the plane mom gets a bad feeling she finally realizes you know oh we didn't leave the coffee pot on we oh i forgot to close the garage door no no that's not it and then you know the classic kevin you know and then that's when uncle frank's like well i left my reading glasses and you know they they <laughs> they finally get to oh and another thing too john hughes does a really nice job and chris columbus does a nice job of setting it up like those drivers are like well the, the phones are out you know what i mean so that kind of sets it up of like oh the phones are out so they can't immediately call right then so that kind of like buys kevin some time buys the plot a little bit more time um so that i think that was kind of a good good move by the writer there but uh, let me ask you guys this. When he finally calls and they get a hold of the, the Chicago Police Department or whatever suburb that is, what do you think if I, I've never personally, I, I've been a teacher and you know, I've seen some other teachers do like some wellness checks on, on kids maybe that haven't been in school and stuff like that. But what do you think of like the police department and what they do? do is, is that, did they do the right thing? Like, do they, do they just knock on the door and if no one answers, no one's there? What do you guys, Greg, what do you think about that? I think clearly, I think clearly there's a, <laughs> they, they're not doing their full diligence. Yeah. That cop kind of like cop, like, yeah, this kid's home alone. He's scared to death. So let's rap on the door one time and then be like, yeah, house looks secure. Tell them to check their kids again. It's like you would you would think he'd be like Kevin. Kevin, this is a police officer. Your mom has sent us here. You know, it's a little. But hey, you got to keep the storyline going for a while and 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 buy him some time. So it, uh, you know, you kind of forgive it. There's a lot of that kind of stuff. It's I, I admire that they made an effort to try to make it as real as possible. But clearly, the, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> It's one of those things that is never, it's not going to happen in this day and age because of, of cell phones and, you know, mm -hmm. even uh, ring doorbells. I mean, you, know, exactly. you, you just, you, they, the fam, the parents would probably be able to spy on Kevin from Paris. Uh, so mm -hmm. just one of those things, but. 
it's i mean not i mean the, the the police department for sure i mean the whole town pretty much fails kevin in this whole entire movie <laughs> i would say but i mean i just loved it too i i caught it this time around when they call and the the cop who was like eating the donut and he's like asking <laughs> by the way not to be kind of kind of like elementary but his name was sergeant Balsack. <laughs> <laughs> i was like I didn't catch that, but anyways, just asking, did he ingest poison and all that stuff? It's just, it's, it's amazing that nobody cares in this movie that this kid's by himself or like, they don't, they almost like don't believe the parents, which is amazing. It, it's, it's, it, it would not happen today for sure. No doubt. No doubt. So moving on, Kevin, Kevin kind of, you know, is doing all the stuff we said, like Rich said, going down the sled, down the stairs, like, you know, and he's starting to like kind of conquer his fears of like, and this is awesome. So he runs outside after, uh, I think he, you know, gets over the fear of uh, his basement with the uh, the furnace or whatever and runs outside and, you know, old man Marley's sitting there and, and looks at him and he just <laughs> screams and runs back in the house. Um, but Kevin does like the whole, you know, aftershave thing and, you know, goes into Buzz's room and starts looking at the... Uh, 1989 edition of Playboy, uh, no clothes on anyone. Disgusting. <laughs> you know, that kind of like all the stuff that we probably would have done as eight, nine, ten-year-old kids. Um, but you know, breaks the shelf, and that's when the tarantula is set loose, and and that's kind of. By the way, I I wrote this down. I noticed a, a poster of Isaiah Thomas too, in uh, in that bedroom. Hmm. Isaiah Thomas was like Michael Jordan's biggest rival at the time. Yes. So I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. That wasn't when the, the shelves broke though. He initially, he just went in there to grab the BB gun and then he yes. shot the yes. little figurines out of the, the laundry chute. <laughs> but uh, the furnace is one of my biggest questions. I, I, to this day, I can't figure out why they even included that. It just, to me, it's just so irrelevant, really stupid. Uh, has nothing to do with the plot line. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, has anybody else thought why did they even include I, this? I actually, I had that same question, Rich. Um, so I'll just jump on this one because I, I got this answered for me today. Apparently, it was supposed to be this big dream slash nightmare sequence, um, like a kid, you know, his fear. And they said it was going to cost like a million dollars to do all the CGI. And the budget of the movie was only 18 million. So they ended up just doing it like kind of half-assed. And, you know, it, it's kind of one of the weaker parts of the movie. But uh, but I think long answer short, if that answers your question. So they could have done without it altogether. Like. I agreed. Agreed. It's so, only in the movie like two times. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I think maybe just to, uh, you know, push the, the hey, he's a little kid. He's going to be afraid of everything the dark, the basement, you know, that kind of stuff, but, but gets over it. So Kevin goes out, starts living his uh, independent life. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just skip ahead to the toothbrush scene real quick. So in the, in the store, asks if the toothbrush is approved by the American Dental Association, which is a great question, by the way, that's, that's phenomenal. But uh, here's my pet peeve with old man Marley comes up and just slams his hand down on the counter. Looks like uh, he was crucified with a bleeding on both sides of the bandage. I mean, you're gonna scare this kid half to death. So, I mean, old man Marley really could have uh, came in not quite as hot in my opinion. What do you guys not think? Not the message there he had, and he's just like, yeah. just stares at him and then he walks out. <laughs> it's, yeah. I don't know what's up with old man Marley because obviously he, you know how it ends, but like he just comes off. He had so many opportunities to not do that, but he just, I don't know. Yeah. That the hand slam, I had that written down too, because who would do that at any store today? So <laughs> I, I saw something. I mean, it's interesting and, and, and who knows if it's made up or not, but it's like the, the, the phases of how his hand is patched up is kind of hmm. symbolic of where he, of his reconciliation with his son. So when he's like, 
when it, when you first see him, his hand, it, he looks like he literally like put his hand through a garbage disposal. And I guess in church, I didn't notice, but he just had a Band-Aid on his hand. Oh. And then at the very end, when he's hugging his family, he has no, nothing on his hand. So, Wow. That's I, think a big, I think it's a little symbolism. That's some big picture symbolism right there. I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> but at the time, the <laughs> mangled hand is, yeah, clearly this guy's not doing himself any favors. And then he's like, you know, you can come say hi to me if you'd like. It's like, yeah. Um, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> really? <laughs> didn't you murder your entire family in 1958? <laughs> I kind of like the toothbrush scene and all the stuff that you know the stuff right before it and a little bit after it uh because it, it kind of makes it a little bit realistic because we all well i'm assuming we all have it went from being uh dependent on our parents to being on our own and yeah. we all have our little things where we feel felt grown up that we would do uh and for him it's going to get his own toothbrush and putting on aftershave and uh <laughs> you know for me it's just cooking my own food and and not buying mcdonald's every day but we i think we all have kind of gone through that phase where we're like okay we're on our own now this is i'm gonna do this like an adult yeah and that and the, and the interaction he has with the store clerk i love that like that's one of my favorite scenes of the movie because he's just like quick on his feet and you know like rich says like you know like when he's when he's buying the toys yeah, it's for the kids you know like <laughs> stuff like that so I love it. I love it. Um, all right. Okay, one more thing about the toothbrush scene. Yeah. One of the most unbelievable parts is when he's running away and he slides underneath the cop's legs <laughs> and he literally s- slides like a hundred feet, like yeah. with it, no it, momentum, no momentum. Exactly. Like all the way across the town. Uh, it seemed like on the pond and it, it, it just, they did it. They overkilled on that one. That's a, that's a great point. And, and that just made me think of probably my new least favorite characters. I think about it is freaking Jimmy, who's like pointing <laughs> like there's an eight year old kid like that's thirty feet away. You're like a teenager. He probably plays sports, and he's like shoplifter. Like, <laughs> go get the yeah. kid. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. I like yeah. it. All right, so let's let's just skip ahead, and instead of going over plot points, let's just talk about the wet bandits in general because now. They're scouting out the houses. They're they're robbing the house across the street. Um, so, what are you guys' thoughts on what they're doing, uh, and and the way they're they're going about things? So, uh, Greg, why don't you tackle that one first? Yeah, it's. I mean, again, they're they're just. I, I was thinking about this today. Like, where are they staying? Like, are they in a hotel somewhere? Like, what? Like, what's their story? Because they're literally just camped out in this neighborhood basically all day and all night and the amazing thing is is like there is every single every single house every single family on in this on this entire block is on vacation for the entire holiday (laughs) so there's nobody around so they're just they're just living in their own like fantasy world right now where they're robbing places in broad daylight they're driving around in this shady looking truck and i just think it's 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 just actually incredible. Like they're, they're just over the top. I, I bet those guys had a blast playing those parts. Cause they're just, oh, yeah. they're just ridiculous at all times and obvious at all times. Obviously they're terrible criminals and it just, it works, but the year that there's, there's never any cars going down the street. There's never anybody walking <laughs> except for Kevin. It's amazing. Good point. Here's my thing. This is my point about uh, old man Marley. If he's around, if he's always around shoveling the sidewalks and sawing the sidewalks, how did he not notice these two thieves in his neighborhood for several days? And and like Greg said, they're there all day. The sun's up, they're there. They're parked in somebody's driveway in their house. If the sun goes down, they're on the street. How did old man Marley not notice these guys? Exactly. That's a great point. Great point. A lot of plumbing, a lot of plumbing being done over Christmas <laughs> break, apparently. Yeah. Um, so the whole interaction when, when Marv and, uh, when, and Harry are scouting out Kevin's house and he, uh, you know, is playing the scene with the, uh, you know, and same thing with the pizza guy with the, uh, angels with filthy souls doesn't get much better than that, in my opinion. And Rich, like you had said earlier, the technology today would be so easy to do that, but like Kevin is so quick with that remote control that it's, it's Mm -hmm. unbelievable. So 
um, just well done in my opinion. That, those are, I would say that is another one of my, probably my favorite scenes in the movie. Um, Kevin has, has to have some type of like sixth sense where he knows that they were going to be there because even the other parts where he was scaring them away, uh, yeah. particularly the where he made it look like there was a party in there. Uh, uh, that's yeah. Scene. yeah. Hey, it is a great scene. And that's my favorite Christmas song ever uh, by Brenda Lee. But how did he know that they were there? <laughs> and then how did he know when they left? Because as soon as they pulled out, he's, he peeks out the window like, uh, you know, he's yeah, got true. telepathy. It's a very <laughs> observant eight-year-old. <laughs> very observant eight-year-old. Um, so we we i'm gonna just skip ahead a little bit you know his mom's trying to get home uh his family decides like you said kind of a maybe not the greatest move by the dad to stay behind not to go with the wife but you know whatever we push the point along so she ends up trading tickets which by the way that old lady was kind of uh kind of driving me nuts her, her and her husband trying to like you know oh her husband was way worse just wheeling, dealing, uh, like extorting this this poor woman that's trying to get back to her <laughs> her child, and uh, he's got big earrings, the big old dangly ones. <laughs> you know the guy I'm talking about. But oh, yeah. uh, but she's like five hundred dollars earrings, a pocket translator, which I don't know what the hell that is, by the yeah, way. Yeah, what is that? Um, but uh, let me ask this question, Rich. You you probably wouldn't know this because you d- said you didn't fly till later, but dave or greg could you just wheel and deal tickets like that back then too i don't think you can she's she wouldn't need to be back where you can onboard with the plane like yeah. you know you can not get back there without a ticket yeah she's <laughs> roaming around back there that's a really good point <laughs> i actually thought about that this week i'm like could you really just walk up to the desk and buy a ticket right there in the airport i mean <laughs> it doesn't seem like you can do that yeah. Uh, no. Um, so, no. so like she ends up somehow in Scranton, Pennsylvania at, at some airport and uh you know runs into John Car- John Candy, which by the way, John Candy, one of my favorite actors of all time, was in planes, trains and automobiles with uh John Hughes and all that stuff. But uh, you know, little scene, apparently he only worked on this movie for one day. And uh he the, I, I read this today, but he made four hundred and fourteen dollars, which is less than oh. um, the the little Nero's pizza driver made in this film. <laughs> um, but you know, kind of like as a favor, you know, as, you know, to the director and stuff. But um, so he was only in it for a day. But would you? I guess if you're desperate, are you going to get on the on on a, a bus with a bunch of like polka guys? <laughs> A budget truck, nonetheless. They get in a budget truck to go. <laughs> a budget truck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not real. Uh, the music's not that bad. Maybe I'm corny, but uh, the music isn't all that bad. But sitting in the back of a budget truck has to be absolutely terrible. That cannot be safe. That cannot be safe. <laughs> uh, um, and, and here's another thing that I caught on to this week, and and it's it's not something that had been even. Uh, relevant until recent but when i don't know if you guys caught on to the names of the band when he was sitting in the when he met kevin's mom in the airport he was rattling off all their names uh and one of them was the kenosha kickers yeah and i'm like wow i i know that name from somewhere the kenosha kickers before last year nobody even cared what about kenosha that's a great point i guess uh I guess every one of his lines was ad lib too, which is just, I mean, he was just, he's just, he's wow. just incredible. Like, I mean, yeah. he just, I think just like rambling on about all the different kind of polka songs and stuff. I mean, I guess that was just all kind of off the cuff. I mean, I'm sure they did a lot of takes, but yeah, he just, polka. he just, <laughs> yeah, it's just when he, when he, when he gets into the movie, it's just, I mean, obviously he's the larger than life figure. Um, and it, adds it definitely it definitely is he, he he owns the movie while he's in it and that's exactly what you want out of somebody that can't that does a cameo like that no doubt, no doubt. um so 
Hey guys, Justin here for the 330 Sports Show on Youngstown Studio. If you would like to advertise on our network with us in the new year, please contact us at 330-259-7278. Our network reaches 25,000 or more viewers per month between our shows on social media and all the podcast platforms. Uh, we are located downtown in the Commerce Building uh, if you ever want to come down, check out our studio, give us a call. We can uh, set up uh, a walkthrough, talk to you about uh, what we can do best for you or your company. And uh, you can also check out any of our 676 shows as of uh, December 15th, 2021 uh, on our network, youngstownstudio.com. We have eight different shows and counting and uh, all of us down here at Youngstown Studio and the 330 Sports Show would like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. All right, so we're going to skip ahead to uh, kind of the, the final, not the final scene, but kind of the biggest scene of the movie, the house scene. So I had mentioned earlier, guys, like I would want that Kevin poster that he made that he would set up to uh, you know, kind of terrorize these burglars that he knows are coming at nine o'clock, doesn't eat his macaroni and cheese that he made, rushed home from the church uh, talking for, with old man Marley. So he gets home, has this all set up and is ready to go. Thankfully, these are punctual burglars because they got there right at, <laughs> at nine o'clock. So let me ask this. We don't have to go through each one of these, these things, but what would, uh, Dave, let's start with you on this one what would what was your favorite burglar uh booby trap i guess we could yeah. say. oh my gosh oh Ooh. there's so many to choose um the one I'll, I'll say the one that i also have a kind of a question of how he even why they even have it or what it even is the flamethrower that like hits the hits, <laughs> hits him in the head i mean what is even that? It's like a almost looks like a little canister that just I don't, I don't even know if that thing is real or what, but <laughs> that's obviously and this just his face, you know, Pesci's face as he's getting like the flames to his head and he pauses for like three seconds as it just hits him. Yeah. It's just a classic, classic one in my that sticks out of my head. Okay. Rich. My I gotta say mine uh, one of the more basic ones, uh, but also one of the more unrealistic ones. Uh, the paint canisters uh, as they're going up the steps, like there's no way in heck that that connects in real life. No way, <laughs> especially twice. Uh, but it's just, it's just so funny that it, these guys are so dumb that they get hit in the face with, with paint cans. Absolutely. Greg, how about you? What's yours? Oh gosh. Um, I mean, it's, it's also good. Like the one, like the, the, the Marv scream when when he puts the tarantula on his face is <laughs> one of the all time great movie screams I think I've ever heard. Um, mm -hmm. And that was a real tar tarantula. And I guess tarantulas don't have ears, so like that they they, they convinced and, and I guess they don't really harm humans either. But they convinced Daniel Stern that he could scream like that with the tarantula on his face, and it, they wouldn't and the tarantula would not react because they can't hear it. But amazing that, that that part. I don't know. It's all I mean, literally. That's just it's great. I mean, the whole thing's great. But that that scream like on the latest watch really got me. We got we got, we got sports. Movies. We got movies. And now we got science. I had no <laughs> idea about the uh, the spiders. That's interesting. OK, it, even though the uh, the movie is very unrealistic uh, and very far fetched, some of those booby traps definitely make me cringe, like the nail oh. in the foot. Yep. on the stairs yeah. oh yeah. my goodness get if you can watch that and not at least cringe up a little bit yeah uh, not you're to tougher mention, than i am he's got a that's a classic scene because once he realizes it he just just falls <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> and, and the it. and the christmas bulbs oh man oh, that, yeah. that's gotta hurt yeah, that, that is crazy. <laughs> that's i'm glad crazy. you said that rich because that was gonna be mine the nail like every time that happens and i've seen this movie 50 or more times mm -hmm. i feel that nail going into my foot like it i mm -hmm. i can just feel it so i'm gonna go with a different one i love when he you know does like the hang glider thing or whatever across into his treehouse and he's like 
hey, you guys, I'm calling the cops. And, <laughs> and Harry's like, well, he's calling the cops. He's like, from a tree house? <laughs> and then he's like, no, he wants us to go back and get all busted up in his fun house and all that. So they start climbing the rope and then he, he goes to cut it. What I question is, okay, so they're pretty big guy you know they're not small people so they're climbing and what is that the second floor so they're maybe 20 25 feet in the air so you're thinking their weight is going to pull them down a little bit when he cuts it they could easily just let go but instead <laughs> they decide to hold on smack into the brick wall again another uh physical humor physical comedy sketch but yeah that geom geometrical that does not that does not clear like there is that no, there's no way they were 20 feet in the air, number one, but yeah. they were way too far out. They would have definitely fell on the ground, even exactly. if they did hold on. Yeah. Uh, and plus, I don't, it would take one heck of an athletic man to pull himself across a loose uh, <laughs> two inch diameter rope like that. Like it just, this, this is not possible, but you know, part of the movie. And, and another one, too, that I mentioned them earlier, the micro machines. I think we've all probably tried that as a kid, like even pretending you were one of them and like walking and like, you know, falling backwards. Um, but yeah, that's so good. The paint can so good. They're, they're all amazing. The door handle, even as something as simple as the ice. Oh, God. But, um, yeah. How long did it take freaking Kevin to tar those steps? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, Anyway, so he he runs across to the neighbor's house, and before that, he why does he use a fake voice when he calls the police? Hello, my name is Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> why can't he just say I'm an eight year old kid and there's burglars after me? <laughs> Maybe yeah. the, the mind of a second grader, but you and know. why does he go around the back and go through the basement? Yes, yes, he's afraid of basements. Number one, good point. And so he was going to run through somebody else's basement. Exactly. Exactly. So I don't know. So that brings me to my least favorite scene, maybe the creepiest scene in, in the movie. When they finally catch him, they put him up on that on the door and like hang him up. My question, and you guys can elaborate or, or go your own way on this. Why does he say I'm going, you know, they're going to, I'm going to smash your face with an iron, do this and that. <laughs> Why does he say I'm going to start by biting off each one of these fingers that to this day creeps me <laughs> the f out so thoughts on that <laughs> i i completely agree and he even like does like he even like puts it like in his mouth and opens it and gets ready to bite before he gets hit it, it it is it is it is disturbing yeah Gregor, never thought of it as that strange but now that you bring it up you know you're right <laughs> Yeah, maybe I, I we're did. not supposed to think about it. And I will never watch that scene again and, and not feel the way you feel now. <laughs> I, I just go back to literally everything they do is just over the top and illogical. So, I mean, they've also, they've also been, let's say, roughed up just a little bit. So they're maybe a little, little angry. Right. I'd probably be ready to bite off some fingers too if I uh, <laughs> went through what they went through. Oh, All yeah. right. All right. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> All right, so old man Marley comes in, saves the day, gets Kevin home, you know, and then we, we'll just skip ahead to the next morning. His mom comes home, uh, you know, and finally saves the day. And then uh, the family's right behind her, right behind her. And then, you know, yes. which, whatever, you do the math and probably should have just <clears throat> stayed in Paris, avoided all that other trouble, which still would have a pocket translator, uh, you know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, goes to kind of like the most touching scene, I think, when he looks out the window and sees, you know, old man Marley uh, with his granddaughter giving her a hug and the son and, and his wife appear to be there. So kind of ends on a, a nice note. And then uh, my final question for you guys, and then you guys can ask your questions or whatever, is how the hell did Kevin get that house so clean <laughs> i didn't think of that that's a, that's true yeah it's i i've actually awesome. been asked that and if you think about it i think it's very reasonable because so? if you go through the stunts 
not a bunch none of them are anything that like really destroys the house okay you can sweep up christmas ornaments the paint cans didn't make any mess uh what else the, tar. the, the ice you could dethaw the ice the tar the steps is probably the, the hardest thing but those right. are downstairs so you're not going to see it anyway but uh pretty much everything that he does none of it is not things that you can't the feathers but you get a vacuum and that might take a little time but it's not un unmanageable okay uh the, if you really think about it uh it, a, it's it is doable that's a really good point i think the only the, the, like like marsh when he tries to crowbar the door he like he like breaks a little bit but you're yeah. like out, out outside of that you're right i'm not really sure there's really any like physical damage done to the house i'm no. gonna I'm going to push back though on uh, to you guys on this one. Why doesn't he fix Buzz's shelf? Is <laughs> that the last line of the movie? Kevin, what the hell did you do to my room? <laughs> that might be a little tougher to fix with broken boards, but yeah, that's, that's I, I just show. think, I mean, I think he prioritizes everything else over Buzz and why not? Yeah. Yeah, that's true that's true i mean he already he took buzz's money i mean what 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 does he care if he cleans up he's gonna be dead anyway yeah. i mean i assume the terrain he did put the tarantula back but we guess we don't know that <laughs> an unanswerable question you guys have any other uh thoughts or questions on this movie i got i've got one that's big i mean how many opportunities does he have to get help to ask someone to church, <laughs> someone at the store, and then why does he say call nine one one after they've already arrived? Why does he not call them and say, "Hey, there's going to be robbers at nine p.m. in my house. Can you just be here to arrest them?" And Excellent point. All this, like, there's there's so many opportunities to get help. That's why I mean, like, the whole town fails them, and you know, in a sense that like no one recognizes that this kid's like all by himself all the time it's it's it's, it's crazy that's a good one but then 911 he actually calls 911 and that's actually when the police i mean they come flying in this Hello, time my name's murphy sergeant <laughs> sergeant ball said came flying in there you know whatever <laughs> came in hot and they were ready to go but before no one could care less so yeah all right that's good you know i mean the, my only rebuttal to that is i'm 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 not sure he's looking for help. That's I think, yeah. you know what I mean. I think he's I think he's he's he feels like he's got a purpose. He's uh, he's owning his life right now. I mean, he misses his family like at night and stuff. And I get that. That's yeah. when you get lonely at night. But he's like, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take these guys out myself. But then at some point, he has the sense to call. But you're totally right. I mean, there's a mil I mean, I get to see like him and Marley in the church. It's like. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I've been home alone for like four days, and it's my family. <laughs> or he's like, I gotta go home because <laughs> there's robbers coming over in about a half hour. Like, you know, you think you say something? I'm I'm gonna take a shot at this myself, but you know, just hang out around. I might need you to just double a guy at some point. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> and that segues into my question, and not my question, but my the it remind like WWE. You can get hit by a chair 15 times <laughs> and you get up every single time. You hit them with a little uh, kick to the chin and they knock them out for the rest of the night. <laughs> in the movie, they get hit in the head with paint cans from 15 <laughs> feet in the air. You get hit with a, an iron, uh, burn your head off. All these things that happen to them. And then at the end, this uh, I'm supposed to believe this little flimsy old uh, aluminum shovel just knocks him out cold it just it just uh, doesn't make any sense i mean the guy murdered his whole family with the shovel <laughs> that's true that's true uh, probably after a bad notre dame loss in south bend too you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's a good point i i never thought about that maybe it's the sum of the total you know what i mean it's like they've been beaten up so bad like greg said that that finally got to him in that that's good that's good um, one other character note that I forgot to mention, I, I messaged, uh, uh, Greg and Dave about this yesterday, but <clears throat> I was watching it and the Santa Claus who we, we didn't talk about yet. The Santa Claus in the movie, uh, is 
the same character in Groundhog Day that talks to Bill Murray and says, hey, you going to see the Groundhog today? So over <laughs> and over. So if you ever watch Groundhog Day, look for that guy. It's the same guy that plays Santa Claus. So I just thought hmm. that was a little interesting casting note there. So um, any did other- anybody see, I know everybody saw Home Alone 2, obviously, but did anybody go out on a limb like myself and watch the new one that just came out, the Home Sweet Home Alone? Mm-hmm. I, I have not seen past two. No, no, me neither. I can tell you it's not a waste of time. Really? It's, oh, wow. Okay. It's totally not a waste of time. It's not going to knock your socks off like one and two, but I promise you it's not a waste of time. It, <laughs> they try to tie it in. Uh, okay. Buzz is the cop in the town now. Uh, <laughs> they definitely they do little things to tie it in. It's way different. But it it it's worth watching, even if if even if you just watch it once. Okay. Okay. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that I did watch it, but hey, I'm a Home Alone huge I, fan, I, so I just I, went for it. I would also say, and I definitely want to watch that. Home Alone three is is not that is, is better than you would expect it to be. Hmm. I've not seen past three, but Home Alone three is actually more real well i mean it's it's a it's a low bar right it's but it's more realistic than the first two and the criminals are actually kind <laughs> of like somewhat savvy and real criminals um but it's not bad um hmm. so it's worth a watch i think i think for, especially for kids like dave i mean that would be good the kid like my kids like that movie i think i think i think Garish probably would too so i'll give it a go it's impressive that they were able to pull a sequel to this i mean because mm-hmm. the second one i mean while it repeats a lot of the same right up from the first one is still very enjoyable i thought so nothing nothing beats the original of course but still very good for sure i i thought of it earlier when we were talking about um i I forget what we exactly were talking about but in the the newest one buzz oh when we were talking about the cops got a call saying hey my kids at home uh in the in the newest one buzz is like oh yeah right my brother Kevin calls me every year on Christmas and tries to pull this prank on me. I'm not falling for it. <laughs> it, it like I said, they're, they tie it in, in in several different ways. And and I almost I thought Miss um, Old Man Marley was in it, but I googled it and he's been dead for several years. But uh, they found someone that looked just like him. Hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, rest in peace. I looked him up too. I think in 2011 he passed away. But the guy was a, a well known poet. And uh, got, uh, you know, obviously had a, a classic look and was asked, hey, you're that guy, you know, a lot. So um, let me ask you guys this. Co- co- two more, three more questions. One, favorite quote from the movie. There's a bunch to choose from, but favorite quote from the movie. Ooh. Whoever wants to take this one first. I, I'm gonna Buzz, your sure. girlfriend. Woof. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, that that was actually gonna be that was actually gonna be my one. So, um, oh man, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you go one. Ahead, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. I, mean, I I I love. I think Greg. I mean, Justin, your shirt is probably the best. I think, but I think underrated. I love when they're like Fuller, easy on the Pepsi, and he's like, just <laughs> the, look is, the look is legendary. <laughs> I'm gonna piss Ooh. all over that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah i mean or, uh, or how about uh buzz i'm going through your stuff you better come out and pound me <laughs> yeah good one too uh, so so I, I for me it's definitely buzz your girlfriend wolf yeah i read this i read this the, yesterday and actually it's a little bit cheesy but the you guys give up are you thirsty for more it, i heard is actually a was actually ad libbed by Macaulay Culkin. How is that possible? Really? Wow. So with on a, with that knowledge, I would say that that's up there too. Because I mean, I don't know how how this kid and and I'll, and I'll maybe save this for a closing comment, but he is he is absolutely incredible in this movie. Yeah, like oh, absolutely yeah. incredible. No doubt. Was he actually eight? I mean, he obviously he was eight in the movie, but was yeah. his age actually eight? I don't. That's a good question. I, he could. He was probably a little older, if I had to guess, but he couldn't have been that much older. Yeah, I. I would say. I would say it was probably 1980. So. So yeah, he's like so, almost 10. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah, depending on when they've actually filmed it, but yeah. 
and he was in uh, he was in Uncle Buck, and that's where he was discovered to be in this movie. They cast like two hundred kids, but they kind of wrote the part for him, basically. So, um, you you guys basically stole all my favorite quotes, but I like I, I I can't think of exactly how it goes, but he's like, "I'm down here, you big horse's ass, come and get me." <laughs> so the the Uncle Frank one, and then they all it kind of like sets it up though. Look what you did, you little, and they all the family just looks at him with hate in their eyes, and you know that, it's just so good. But it like sets up the whole rest of the movie. So I'm gonna go with that one. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but the whole scene, like you said, in the supermarket was just that whole conversation was was just so classic and yep. and grown up. And yep. he said several things in that one scene that make you laugh. <laughs> Where do you oh, he's like? Oh, I have a coupon. Oh, yeah. I have a coupon for that. I was in the paper this morning. Yeah, <laughs> so, good. <laughs> so good. Like an old man, literally like an old man. So well done. So well done. Um, all right, next next question. MVP of the movie outside of Kevin. Cannot be Kevin because I think Kevin would, you know, won the movie. So who is your MVP of the movie outside of Kevin? Dave, oh, let's man. start with you. You're thinking hard on this one. So oh gosh, yeah. I mean, I think there's there's two obvious ones. Um I'm trying. I mean, I. I mean, it's a toss-up between Harry and Mark for me. Okay. I, mean, I give a co-MVP to both of them. I mean, I'm sure someone's going to say one of them. So maybe make the case to why one's better than the other. Greg, I. I know you were like Marv. He's. I mean, he's just kind of slapstick stupid. So it's kind of. It's kind of enjoyable. So maybe him, but I have to, It's it's between them two. And that guy's kind of partial. Go ahead, Rich. I'm kind of partial to Harry because I, I got a friend that's kind of slapstick stupid and not on purpose. Uh, so I, I know how it feels to deal with somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Real quick, though, Harry is uh, Daniel Stern, right? Uh, no, Harry. No. Is, Harry's Pesky. Harry's Pesky. Marv, 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 though. Marv, though, Daniel Stern, yeah. I mean, what a great career that guy's freaking had though voice of the wonder years he was in like city slickers he was in this movie he was in a ton of other stuff too so rookie uh, of the year rookie yeah. of the year phil brinkma i believe yeah so i mean they, there's a big big time uh cast in this movie like really that has done a lot of good stuff all right so we already basically said this movie couldn't be made today like it could in maybe other ways the power would have to be out cell phones would have to be dead but pretty much not uh not making this movie today and and it probably shouldn't be remade because it's it's so good on its own but let me ask this final question and if you guys have any thoughts you can you can um jump jump in with this but i'm gonna ask just for your final grade for this movie on a one to 100 scale so uh, I'll give you mine first. I'm going to go with a 94% because I think this is an A movie. Uh, 94 is the highest grade I've ever given uh, our movies that we've ever broken down. We've done Happy Gilmore. We've done Varsity Blues. We've done Groundhog Day. And now we've done Home Alone. Uh, I'm going to go 94%. To me, it's, it's about as good as it gets. Maybe a few little flaws here and there. But Greg, you know, we've talked about other Christmas movies. This is a movie I think you can pick up at any point in the movie and you will watch it. You will stop and watch whether, you know, it's the beginning of the movie, the middle or the end, and you're going to, you're going to be entertained no matter what. So to me, uh, 94%, I'm giving it a 94% A. So uh, Greg, let's go to you next. Yeah, I was actually at like 93 in my, in my head. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's an all timer for me. And it's, and, and, and it's aged well, but it's aged in a different way, I think, too, because, you know, growing up, I think when we were kids, you, you kind of were like, well, I just want to get to the, the part with all the traps. And that part is great. Don't get me wrong. But as I think as you get older, you appreciate the other the other parts of the movie, um, a little bit of the softer side of it. And one thing we didn't mention, um, kind of an honorable mention MVP of this movie is the score. And the music in this movie is... Mm -hmm tremendous and it really kind of like i mean it's it's again you don't i'm not a big like 
score guy and like I'm not like analyzing the music but just the way from the opening credits all the way to like you know the 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 tone of the music when the bad guys are on and just you know when it when there's when you're getting into emotional parts of the movie and the kind of the songs that play there it really is a a, I think a big part of this movie um but overall again Macaulay Culkin um we we got a lot of baggage with him now but I can't I can't think of a movie ever and he does this really the same thing in Home Alone too but especially in this movie he's a one-man act for what 45 minutes of this movie and I can't think of a movie um another movie like this where a 10 year old kid is basically a one man show and he carries it Mm -hmm. with so much charisma. He's funny. He's just, you still laugh at it to this day. So that's awesome. Yeah. All time. That, that music part is, is an awesome answer. I didn't even think about that. So great point. Great point. Um, I, I actually just mentioned that this week to somebody who I was watching with them, like the, the way that they they cover every great Christmas song, whether it's upbeat and exciting or it's traditional, mm-hmm. like they cover the whole gamut and it's it seems like it's always perfect and it just gets you locked in even more with the music. Um, you guys are a tough crowd. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go with 100. Um, <laughs> uh, that times means- 100. 100 times 100. 10. Uh, <laughs> All right, that's good. I mean, never had a perfect score. So, I mean, can, this is a, it's a time honored classic. Uh, it's a cult classic. It will never, it, it will never go away. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, your kids love it. I don't have any kids, but my 12 year old niece uh, just told me last week, oh, I, I've been watching Home Alone all the time now uh you know it it will never go away it's just it's perfect (laughs) i love it love it so i have a 94 greg has a 93 rich gave it 100 perfect score dave times 100 times 100 (laughs) sorry 100 is their max score here uh rich but we'll, we'll we'll give we'll give you the 100 uh dave what is your your score on this movie i'm i'm right with you greg and justin i'm on the 93 on this i mean it's 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 you know it's definitely every holiday thing you know every time around i think i've watched it every christmas with the kids since they've started enjoying it um i do think it's timeless in the sense because i mean look at it now it's what now you know 32 years later whatever we're almost and we're still talking about it Mm -hmm. it's still enjoyable and even how you talked about 2020 like if this movie was today how improbable it would be you when you watch it I until we start breaking down the movie like this, you don't really even think about that stuff. Like mm-hmm. you're just, you know, you're just enjoying it and you're just going with it. So definitely, I mean, I think Greg, you have a great point. Like how um, Macaulay Culkin's like a one man show. Like he basically, you know, is he definitely is this movie. I had to wonder. You had to wonder if like they cast somebody else, how successful it would be. Right. Um, but yeah, and the music score is definitely something too. Like the opening song whatever it is like the theme song for home alone is just nostalgic in a sense whenever you hear it so definitely uh definitely up there so so uh john williams maybe the mvp outside of macaulay culkin in this movie uh also did stuff like uh what uh jurassic park and raiders of the lost ark and et and i think some of the star wars movies even star wars yeah you did yeah yeah so legend legend in the field um so guys, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. We probably broke down the movie as long as the actual running time, but uh, this was awesome. This will be, uh, we can pretty much put this on loop every uh, December and replay this. Next year, let's uh, let's get after uh, Home Alone 2, uh, talk about uh, number 45 making a cameo in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but Justin, if you notice when I tweeted those pictures, uh, the the one I tweeted from Home Alone One got a whole lot more likes and retweets than the one I tweeted of Donald Trump. <laughs> it, 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 people don't want to touch it. <laughs> not, not surprised. Not surprised. A very uh, polarizing uh, figure back then. Maybe a slightly a little bit more today. So uh, this was good, guys. Rich, 
uh, Dave, Greg, this was awesome. We appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll put this, this will be out uh, around Christmas time and we'll, uh, we'll have it, you know, hopefully out and uh, make sure to share this with anyone you think would, would enjoy it. So uh, you guys have a great night and we will talk to you guys soon.